Hip hop is a, it's not just what lives on the radio. It's not even like an eighth of what it is. Um, it's a lens, it's a language, it's a, it's a way you hear, it's a way you see, it's a way you feel, it's a way you identify for yourself and in relation to other people. And My name is Aisha Upchurch. I am a 2015 alum of the Arts and Education program at HGSC. I am also currently on faculty um, teaching courses, new courses at the Ed School. One in the fall was on hip hop education and then a module on movement in Ed. I'm Steve Seidel. I'm the faculty director of the Arts and Education program here at the Graduate School of Education at Harvard. I think it was clear to me from the very first moment I was becoming seriously aware of hip hop uh, that hip hop and education were inextricable. I was teaching in the 1980s at South Boston High School. Uh, one of my students spit out endless rhymes and uh, pretty early I said, you're going really fast, I'm not catching it, what are you saying? And he. Uh, he said, you really want to hear? And then did what I now understand to be an, a straight out recitation of the entire uh, lyrics of the message um, from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Uh, it was amazing. I didn't, I didn't know the song, I hadn't heard it. Um, that was my introduction. An introduction to hip hop, but also an introduction to its relationship to education because he was turned on and he was a master of language um, in a way that I just had not seen him demonstrate in high school. And then I took it home. Yes. I went out and bought uh, that album, The Message. That was back in the day of turntables, of course, and um, our son Sam was probably four years old and um, took to it immediately. Uh, that early connection to hip hop, I think was important to um, who he became in many ways. In 1997, there was an event in Asquith Hall in which Chuck D and Cornell West had a conversation. And it was a totally sold out space. I mean, people were pushing their way in. And it was a beautiful event. I mean, it was a very open, improvised dialogue between these two amazing artists and people. After the Chuck D. Cornell West event, I don't actually have any memories of hip-hop ed work. I think it was in that time, fairly close to 2013, that uh, Cool Herc and Cindy were invited by the college to come up and uh, do some sessions with uh, students. And I uh, went to one of those sessions, an evening conversation with them. I mean, it was just a group of people sitting around talking to people who had launched a revolution. One of the things that I remember and which has influenced my teaching and some of the work that I do right now is uh, Cindy talked a lot about the listening circles they used to have, how people would be going out, finding all kinds of vinyl, bringing it back to people's apartments, putting it on, and everybody just sat and listened. And it was a wide range of stuff. They were educating themselves. They had created a school. The little school that they made for themselves uh, was very inspiring to me. Now, in my class, the core course for the arts and education program, the very first assignment that people have is a listening circle. And it is explicitly inspired by what Cindy described as the process that she and a group of friends were using to educate themselves in the very early days of hip hop music. Hi, I'm Mary Jo, AKA 
Dr. Man. And I'm her sidekick, LeBron James, a.k.a. The Math Man. And we'd like to present our project, Edutainment. Yo, Sean, I'm tired of students dissing mathematics, man. Saying it's too hard to learn, and when will I need this stuff anyway? So what we gonna do is flip the script and preach mad hip-hop style. Now tell me the dealio with old girl you wanna get with, so I can help you sizzle this frizzle. Chris Emden who's at Teachers College, uh, came to be the keynote for the um, AOCC conference. When Jesus says, my universe runs like clockwork forever, words come together, a sudden change in the weather. The scale of events don't make sense. The storm and you're warning, you're drawn in by immense gravity, dust and clouds and debris. I move at colossal seas, speeds and crush an MC. He's talking about imagining himself in outer space going through a black hole. And, and I think that one of the things that happened out of that was that it was an invitation to hip hop folks all over the school and to talk about the potential here. I'm deliberate about ensuring that I function in the, at the intersection of theory and academic heft and practice and community connectedness. That there is no version of me that is one or the other and that I function in the highest of academic spaces with the same type of fervor and hip-hopness as I do when I'm in the hood. And I know that just my presence sometimes, because I hold on to those multiple identities, shows folks, like it pushes dopeness in their face. Following that, Asia Upchurch arrived and basically started to say to me, why aren't we doing more? I applied to HGSE um, having worked in the world as an artist, a performer, a youth worker, all through hip hop. I had my own dance company in DC. I have worked in DC public schools and in some um, schools in the counties in Maryland. I had traveled um, nationally and internationally as an artist, um, particularly um, a kind of culminating transformative experience for me was having the opportunity to go to Central America through the State Department as a U.S. cultural envoy in dance. Those experiences showcase to me that there's something very universal about hip-hop. I'm in places where, yes, I speak Spanish, but it wasn't the spoken language that was bringing together so many young people and adults. And this is like a real undeniable in-person experience around how hip hop speaks to people across generations, across geographic boundaries. Even in my um, personal statement to apply to Harvard, I was talking about all that I saw possible by censoring hip hop um, in education work. And I applied because I knew that there was evidence of things happening, guests that I had seen here at the school before me. Um, and so I was like, yeah, this place, this is gonna work out. <laughs> um, so I literally, Ask Steve every week after class, when are we gonna make this happen? And then he turned it around on me and he said, well, okay, how are you gonna make it happen? And so we worked it out to have Sam and Angel Newman, who's a youth worker, um, an artist in Rhode Island, come up and we hosted the first hip hop education cipher in the spring of 2015. And um, folks across the, the HGSC community and the Harvard campus came. And it was such, for me, a beautiful experience. Um, a student in AIE who had worked at the High School for Recording Arts brought the, the directors and the founders and students from the school to HGSC for programming. The High School for Recording Arts serves overage undercredited youth. So we have a large age range and are working with young people who um, have not historically been served by the public education system. It is a black owned, black operated institution that is doing real work on the ground. In my year here, I saw all sorts of professors and scholars talking about how education should be done without really being able to provide examples of that rhetoric. And the whole time I was sitting there thinking, the High School for Recording Arts is the best example that I've ever come across. Why not bring them out, um, let them talk about the work that they've been doing.
And then the following year, uh, my good friend from the Arts and Education program, James Ahn, started the Hip Hop Education Initiative. So it was a bunch of people who are interested in how to use hip hop in curriculums and classrooms, or how people have been using it so far if they had been previous educators before they came to Hugsy. What we did was we just had like listening circles where we would come together, share music that we liked, and talk about sort of different strategies and things that we'd use with our students. Tell yourself that you're worth it. Tell yourself that you're worth it. The most important kind of most prominent thing we did was we started the hip hop education conference at Harvard. So that was the first time the Graduate School of Education hosted a, co a conference dedicated to hip hop education. I remember working with Steve, saying to those founding members, I, I will make sure that this is not a one off. And Steve felt the same way. And so um, that conference that started in April of 2017 has continued for the past two years. And so what I am talking about is this is the music, and it is a culture that has the power to inspire the power to galvanize, and the power to heal. We wouldn't have to go to school for this because it was already implanted in us from birth. This, it was already in us from birth. Last year, I was a artist in residence at the Ed School and found some grad students to continue the charge of the Hip Hop Education Conference and Initiative. There are lots of folks who come through the doors here at, at Harvard who are very curious about pedagogical frameworks that are, that are revolutionary or, or, or meaningful. All of us who care about designing learning experiences that are relevant and responsive to the populations that we work with. Over the summer, um, host a course, uh, got some support from, uh, and positive feedback from the faculty. And so in the fall of 2018, at the first curricular offering on hip-hop here at HGSC. A beautiful community of, of graduate students across many different cohorts gathered to just kind of, as I call it, it's kind of like a toe dip in a kiddie pool of a larger um, body of water that is called hip-hop education and pedagogy. Um, um, and then this past year, uh, efforts kind of went to a new level, getting, getting some funding from the Dean's Office to launch the Hip Hop Education Lab. So Hip Hop X is this creative lab experience where high school students and graduate students come together to explore and experiment with hip hop in education. The whole point of Hip Hop X is to mix up what we even think teaching and learning and education is supposed to look like. It can look like young people facilitating. It can look like adults learning from teenagers. It looks like adults and teenagers coming together to create artistic products, programming at their schools, all centered on the beautiful power of hip hop culture and arts. Um, and in part of writing for that, I thought it was very important to earmark <laughs> funding to make sure a conference can happen because we know that conferences are beautiful events, but they cost money. It was by far the, the most successful of the three years so far in terms of attendance. The energy and the mission has stayed the same. Young people, adult people getting together, hashing it up, sharing what they're doing around hip hop um, and learning from each other. That has never changed. And I mean, that's the essence of hip hop, right? So what I'd love to see happen moving forward out of this launch year where we had um, community events, which were just like great jams where folks would just let loose, listen to music, open mic, ciphers, um, and we had the conference. Um, so I want to see those things continue. I'd love to see the course continued. I'd love for young people to be coming in and teaching a session or two or three of the graduate course. I'd love for graduate students to feel like the lab is almost like a practicum, like a real basic but essential practicum of like, yo, you wanna work with young people. Do you know how to sit in a room with young people? I think there's so many possibilities and I'm looking forward to um, continuing it and refining partnerships across Harvard this year. Uh, we've been able to get support from the Hip Hop Archive, um, we've uh, teamed up with some of the college uh, 
college groups, um, student groups that are also doing hip hop programming to have events. Um, but even more than that, it'd be nice to just know that there are folks who want to think about again how to radically collaborate within hip hop. We're all in this together. Uh, uh, oh, oh, okay. I'm going to be serious now. Be ready for the remix.